Welcome to the ultimate fishing experience. This week we're in Kissimmee, Florida on the world-renowned Kissimmee Chain of Lakes where people come from all over the globe for their shot at trophy largemouth bass. Hi, I'm Keith Allen and this week we're going to meet retired Marine Corps Sergeant Joe Kowalski. In the past four years, Sarge has helped nearly 150 veterans experience the therapy that fishing provides through his fishing outreach program. Sarge thinks he's here to surprise an old Marine buddy and going on a special fishing trip hosted by the city of Kissimmee. I'm in there. Sarge, do me a favor. Yeah, no, a Larry's going to be here in about an hour. Can I mic you up and you can play the role of Larry for rehearsal? Little does he know, the surprise is really for him. Sarge really epitomizes what we do on the show, and that's why we're going to treat him to his own ultimate fishing experience. Sarge, come here for a sec. Listen, I know you think you're here to surprise one of your Marine buddies, but I got news for you. This surprise is actually for you. Welcome to your own ultimate fishing experience. Oh, come on. You got to be kidding me. I'm, I'm not. And I know that you didn't think you were going to come here and, uh, and have a chance to go fishing. So our friends at Bass Pro Shops were Orlando, US Reels, and Pure Fishing, hooking you up with gear. Oh, God. And then there's, of course, one more key element making sure you've got a good guide. Elite Series Pro <laughs> oh, Bobby man. Lane knows this lake better than anybody. Born into a competitive bass fishing family, Bobby Lane's brother Chris is a fellow Elite Series Pro. The 2008 Bassmaster Rookie of the Year is a top tier competitor on three major fishing tours. How you doing, Sarge? How you doing good, I gotta Bobby? say the honor is all mine, but if you're gonna fish with a pro, you have to look like a pro. So, we got your own jersey oh, for you. Wow. You got your name on the back and on the front. Welcome to the ultimate fishing experience. Oh, brother, thank you. Every time I come down here, it always amazes me. What's that? Well, it, you know, it, it's surrounded by grass and hydrilla and, and all kinds of stuff. And it, these guys, these biggins, are just sitting in there waiting. You're right. And they're always somewhere different every yep. year. But boy, when you find them, it is fun, fun. I'm going to get you a frog out, Sarge. You ever thrown a topwater frog? Yeah, I got a whole thing of them. The way I like to rig this thing, I slide it through the head, and most of the frogs have where there's a little vent right, right in here. Right. Bring, a, bring a nice four-op mustad hook right through it, bring it through the body of the frog, and then I like to skin hook it in the back. Yeah, keep it a little weedless. So when a fish does get it, the hook pops out automatically. I like that frog design because the ones I got at home were a little bit wider, but that looks yep. like it's got fi like fins on the side of it. I'll show you what this thing looks like in open water here. And, it uh, looks the same when it's coming through the grass. You simply just throw it out and it, it just buzzes. You can hear it chumming right across the top of the water. Yep. They just can't resist it. Oh, you got one? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Bobby, this is a good one. No kid. This is a good one, bro. Bring him to me, Sarge. Bring this him to one. me. Oh, that's a nice fish. It's a beautiful fish. Oh, look at that thing. Whoa! Nice <laughs> one, Sarge. <laughs> <laughs> nice job. Early morning. That's what we Lake call. Toho Bass. Oh, man, that makes the whole day. He's yours, buddy. That's the little things in life. Yeah, but the thing, look at the color on that fish. It's all real black and dark. Of whom they're a lot, um, a lot lighter green. 
<laughs> nice work. Let's get you another frog oh, on there. Oh, man. How old were you, Sarge, when you joined the Marines? 1980, 20, 21. Wow. I, I wish I had joined sooner. I really do. Everybody in my family been in the service, you know, my great uncles, my uncles, all that. My dad was in Korea. Figured, well, my, I got to serve my country somehow, some way. Wasn't sure what service I was going to join at first. And I went into the uh, Navy office, and they took me down to New London, showed me the subs, and walked into the Air Force office. They took me up to uh, Bradley Airport. They had A-10s up there at the time, showed me the planes. Went into the Army, they took out an M60 tank. We tooled around on that for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Walked into the Marine Corps recruiting office, the first thing he looks at me, he goes, you fat slob, you want to be one of us? <laughs> I went, huh? You ain't taking me anywhere and showing me anything cool? Hell no. So uh, I said, OK, and basically threw a challenge in front of my face. And I liked that. Absolutely. And uh, wanted to be the best. Wanted to be the best, and they were. Oh, oh, got another one? <laughs> yeah. Good Lord. You get the, I, God, I can't. I like frogs. Sarge, I'm having a hard time keeping my bait in the water. All I do is reel it in and lip your fish. <laughs> well, I'll get them. You can go ahead and keep going. No, no, no. <laughs> My big brother or my best friend, Steve Andrews, started fishing right here in Cheshire. Mm -hmm. That's where Steve grew up in that house right there. And this one over here behind us is mine. We're both only children. We grew up in the late 50s and 60s and early 70s here. And we always fished. Whether we took our bikes when we were in grade school, his mother took us to certain spots here and there. And we kept fishing right up and through high school. Then we both went in the service. Steve joined the uh, Air Force ROTC, and I went in the Marine Corps. And we'd always kept in touch through the service. You know, we'd see each other. Sometimes we came home on leave, that kind of thing. We always had these two big dreams all our lives after fishing together all these years. One day, one of us was going to own a Ranger bass boat. And the other thing was we were going to take this trip to go trophy bass fishing somewhere for huge largemouth bass. Well, he had gotten back from Germany in 1998. He called me and he said, uh, I just won the Texas State Lottery for $5,000 and I'm taking you on our dream of going to trophy bass fish. We're going to Lake Nero, Mexico, which is where I caught the biggest fish and probably will be the biggest fish of my life is eight pounds, six ounce largemouth. And we had a ball. Unfortunately, it, when I left at the end of that week, it was the last time I saw him alive. January 27th of 2000, Steve's wife had called me and said that he passed away from a heart attack. Every time I go fishing, my big brother Steve comes with me. This is our dream. Look Come at here. this thing! Come here, Freddy. Come here, come here, come here. Don't, don't, don't jump. Nice come job. here, sweetheart. Hey, yeah, it's good fish, Sarge. You got some stuff. <laughs> hey, a little bit of salad to go with it. Yeah. Nice job. That works. Man, he ate it. I've got to get in gear. So, Sarge, I understand you have started up your own charity right there on the back. The Major, Major Stephen Andrews Fishing Outreach Program. Wow. It was around late 2007, 2008. I was talking to my counselor one day, and he says, what are you doing? I says, well, I'm fishing a lot. And he says, you need to do more of that. It's keeping you a lot calmer, and you seem to be a lot better. Yeah, OK, fine. So I thought about it for a while. I'm going, you know, if it does this for me, can it help out my fellow vets? Steve's mom 
um, was still alive at the time. She just passed away a couple weeks ago. And I said, you know, Mrs. Andrews, I wanna, I wanna start this program, and would you mind if I use Steve's name? And she said, no, not at all. And basically what the program I wanted to do was I wanted to expose as many veterans as I could to fishing. So I give these guys a rod, a reel, they get a tackle box, and I put it all together, and I take them out on the water for a day, and, it, and the wife whips up some sandwiches, and you know, we go out and have lunch, and we spend a whole day on the water. Sandwiches or sandwiches? Sandwiches. Sandwiches, okay, sandwiches. that's Yankee talk. I, yeah, I can hear sandwiches. <laughs> and I've taken guys out who've never fished before, you know, you teach them to cast, and now they have their own rod and reel, they have their own tackle box, they have some knowledge, and they can go to any pond, anywhere, on anybody's boat, and they can go fish. Yeah. And it's like giving them therapy for the rest of their lives. Awesome, uh, amazing. So I, I remember one kid I took out, his name was Jesse. Young army guy, came home from Iraq, um, severe PTSD, and he's telling me, you know, he, he came home and he had, had a lot of family problems. We talked and I said, well, you know, if it, when stuff rolls around in your head that much, Grab the rod, grab the tackle box, go hit a pond or a lake. Yeah. And he had two, young, two small young kids. And about three months later, get this email from him. And it's a picture of him and his little kids holding up a bass oh, be nice. that he caught on a pond. He told me, he said, Sarge, thanks for giving me the tools to get my family back. It's that kind of reaction that I get every now and then it brings a little satisfaction and peace to me. Church. And how many have you run? Uh, on the average, I try and take out anywhere from 35 to 40 guys a year. Wow. You know, and I mean, you've been doing this for how many years? This is, this, this is my fourth year. I just completed my fourth year. Better than 140. Yeah, it's about wow, that. Wow, that is amazing. You know, the neat thing, Sarge, is everything about you is positive. That's what's the amazing part to me. And if there's any way in the world I could help. I greatly appreciate that. I, you know, I'm just an old recon marine trying to help out my fellow. That's the best way I know how. And, Fishing seems to be the ticket, so here we go. Sarge, let's get back to fishing. Let's go fish. <laughs> I'm ready to catch one. <laughs> I don't know, this one's pulling pretty good. Oh, <laughs> you got me. <laughs> you got me by a long shot. Brother, you have no idea how, <laughs> how small my fish, no, I'm yeah, <laughs> How special this is to me to be here with you. My, my grandfather was an ex-Marine, he, he. No such thing as ex. He was a Marine, yes sir, you're right. There you go. He smoked a cigar and we caught several bass together. Me smelling that cigar this morning and being here with you, brings back memories that I haven't thought about in years and years, and I appreciate you being here. I'm honored to have this opportunity, and how better could it be? Tell you what, from what this whole experience is, it's touched me deeply. Coming down here, fishing with somebody like you, it, there's no words. It comes straight from the heart. There's no words. This is so special for me. You the man, sir. So Bobby, when was the first time you put a rod in your hand? My dad was a huge fisherman his whole entire life, so I was throwing a bait caster when I probably was eight years old. I've been fortunate to grow up around it. Yeah, I know the feeling. Whoa. Hey, that was a hit. Good. Uh, a couple of months ago, Fishing yeah. with a buddy on Lake Kissimmee, took a crankbait to the side of my cheek. Oh, how nice. It went in so deep I could feel the hook with my tongue. <laughs> I had to go to Lake Wales Emergency Room to get it removed, so. I tell you, I'll never forget it. 
<laughs> every year, my dad would rent this cottage, and the first week every year we did it, Steve would come up and spend a week, and we'd go fishing. Oh, we couldn't have been more than about five, six years old at the time. He's on the end of the dock, and I just started to come down the dock. He goes to back cast, catches me right in the forehead. <laughs> Trip to the emergency room, here we go again. It ain't fun, is it? Oh, man. Welcome to Beyond the Experience. Each week, we're gonna feature organizations and groups that help our heroes get on the water and experience the recreational therapy that fishing provides. Fishing is great therapy for returning service members. Part of PTSD is, you know, a heightened sympathetic nervous system. In other words, a fight or flight. For most people, actually, water is extremely soothing. So getting out on the water is, is a wonderful way of bringing that fight or flight down and finding enjoyment again. Irish Water Dogs initially started out as a, as a kayak and outdoor blog here in, in Northeast Florida. We wanted to give back. We're a big military town here in Jacksonville, and we wanted to give back to our service people that are here, our injured vets, so we could once a month take all our injured guys and girls and take them out in the water and give them the benefit of fishing, the benefit of the calm of the water, and to just help with their therapy that way. You're taking a life that has changed forever. He's got to rebuild the self-esteem, self-confidence, and I think fishing is a great opportunity to get out there and understand that there's many things he can do. You have a lasting impact on our life. So, you know, the more people you can do it for, the more people you can help out that don't have the opportunity, it's, it makes a difference. For more information on how you can help our wounded warriors on the water, visit our website at ultimatefishingexperience.com. Sarge, what was the most interesting place you saw in the Marines? Norway, it was beautiful over there. Uh, we were up above the Arctic Circle with NATO doing a joint training exercise. It was a lot of fun up there, 10 feet of snow. Never get in a snowball fight with Norwegian kids. <laughs> they will kick your tail every time. Sarge, I'm pretty sure we ain't got to worry about that. I, I'm down here in Florida, we don't see much snow. Oh, we can fix that problem. We can import it. <laughs> no, I'm fine with the way the weather is. <laughs> what happened to your knees? One uh, too many humps with about 120 pounds of crap on my back up and down over Hill Dale in those old Cadillac boots. That one's had about seven operations on it, and that one's had about eight. How did being a Marine change your life? Ooh. Probably the best way I can explain it is a quote that Ronald Reagan gave us many, many years ago. And he said, some people wake up every day wondering if they've ever made a difference. Marines don't have that problem. That's it. It's, Amazing. You know, when I was in the Corps, you lay your head down at night, and I know I did something good for my country. Bobby, so what's the biggest fish you ever caught? Well, in a tournament or just fun fishing? Whatever. I have a 14-3 on my wall. Oh, man. But I caught it in a phosphate pit. And one year, I had three over 10 pounds in a tournament about 200 yards from here. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> 1998, he calls me up. He had just come home from uh, Germany. And he was stationed at McAllen Air Base down in Texas. He calls me up and says, hey, I just won a Texas lottery for five grand. He never won it. I found out later on after he passed away that he got a re-enlistment bonus from the Air Force. <laughs> Biggest fish, 8.6. Oh my goodness, what a giant. Biggest fish in my life. I miss that son of a bee. Oh, my God, 
on, Sarge. That's a big one. This is a good. That's a big one. I mean, a big one. Bring him on oh. up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Nice. That will do. Nice. Oh. You're a firm believer in the top water plug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Class is now in session. <laughs> Well, nice. Sarge, after two days of fishing, I'd say we put a hurting on him. Let's Thank you very much. Okay. Ugh. Thank you. Sarge's ultimate fishing experience with Bobby Lane on the Kissimmee chain may have been over, but his time with our ultimate fishing experience family is just about to begin. Sarge, we've talked about this a little bit over the, the past couple of days. Your program really epitomizes what we do. And I would be honored if you would take on the mission of helping us find organizations and programs that are like yours, giving veterans a chance to get on the water, helping them go fishing. I want you to join our team. It, it ain't about putting the mug on TV. Oh, it's man. about helping us find these guys, helping us find these programs, helping on create awareness. Condition. We help out as many as we can. That's the goal. Done deal. Thank you. One more thing, Sarge. Mm -hmm. I know it takes support to keep your program going. Yeah. We want to make sure that program continues. I'd like to present you with a check that's going to help you get your next hundred little oh, brothers to have an ultimate fishing experience of their own. Sarge. Oh, man. Takes a hero to find heroes. You're gonna do a great job. Oh, man. Do you know how many guys I can take out with this? Thank you. Welcome to the team, bro. What an amazing gentleman. I, I feel honored just to be in this position, to spend two days on the water with a man like him, to hear the stories that he went through, and for him to give back to what he's doing for veterans now, his, his charity work and taking these gentlemen out fishing is, is amazing to me, and it's, it's been an honor this past two days. I feel touched by this for sure. Bobby Lane is probably one of the best guys I've ever met. I have never had anybody do anything like this for me before. This experience has given me a new hope in believing that there still is enough good people in the world that care about veterans to do something like this. I can't thank you guys enough, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart.